first of all, I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha and Shiksha Guru. Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sata Sri Sri Mahat Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Then I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet Hare Krishna of my Shiksha and Sannyas Guru. Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sata Sri Sri Mahat Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Jai. Then I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my two Shiksha Gurus, Nitya Lira Prabhishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sata Sri Sivan Srila Gorgovinda Goswami Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Goswami Maharaj. Jai. I offer my most humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of the Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada, Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I offer my most humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of the head of this assembly, Pujapad. Prem Prayojan Prabhu, and to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Gurudev Ki Jai! I remember in 1986, when my father died, I went to the funeral. <coughs> it was in Brooklyn. And all these people showed up. People I'd never met. They were my father's friends. The kids who ran in the street with him when they were young. They played stickball and football and whatever they did, you know, in those days together as kids and got in trouble and did all kinds of crazy things that kids do in Brooklyn. And I thought, I never met any of these people. I don't know them. Who are they? <laughs> but they all had stories about my father. So, to some degree that was like that, I was a little bit fortunate. Very early on, Srila Prabhupada once told me, not out of any ego or boasting, but he said to me, he looked at me right in the eye, he said, you and I associated in your previous life, and we're associating now. So there was something, I must have had some connection. I had had a dream that Bhakti Vinod Thakur gave me beads when I was a small boy. So I had some connection with these personalities previously. And so Srila Prabhupada in our relationship and how he dealt with me and how he dealt with my associating with his previous friends and God brothers, dealt with me differently. I remember him sending out this letter, no one should go to see my God brothers. Meanwhile, he sent me a letter, he said, go see my God brother, I want you to talk to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> told everybody not to see your God brother, now you want me to go see So there was something about our relationship that I had with him, that he gave me access to these people. And so I got to know a lot of them as a youngster. Sure. Uh, Bhakti Daiti Madhav Maharaj, who was the guru of uh, Srila Bharti Maharaj, and who I had a very close relationship with. And he, we, we held a program for Prabhupada's disappearance in Puri at the Purushatam Gaudiya Mat. 
which was the place where Bhakti Siddhanta had his mm-hmm. house. And that was the place where Bhakti Siddhanta sent the last letter to Srila Prabhupada. My instruction to you that you should go to the Western countries and preach in the English language. This is my final instruction to you. And there's that letter, on the basis of that letter and the instruction that he got when he was first met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, that he carried out this mission to go to the West and preach. And There was a chance for me to meet many, many of Srila Prabhupada's God brothers and other people. I had not met Srila Narayana Maharaj. I would heard about him because he was famous. Amongst the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, he was very famous. I remember reading one letter Prabhupada sent to him. He said, amongst all the sevaks, in Gaudiyamat, I think you are the best sevak in Gaudiyamat. So Srila Prabhupada had very high regard. He wrote another letter to Srila Narayamaj. He said, when I first saw you, I had love for you the way my Guru Maharaj had love for me the first time he saw me. Mm-hmm. So it was a connection of, of love between the two of them that very, very deep, very, very intimate. Mm. And Srila Prabhupada, you know, he, he wanted to continue the mission that he had started. And so the people that he had some friendship with, some intimacy with, Bhakti Daitya Madhav Maharaj had an acharya that he appointed. He was not yet acharya because Bhakti Daitya Madhav Maharaj left after Prabhupada left. So, but he was the number one, he was secretary and assistant. And Srila Prabhupada once told him, I can see, his name was Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Maharaj. He said, I can see that you received the full mercy of your Guru Maharaj. This is a very special thing to say that. Receive the full mercy of your Guru Maharaj. Means that everything was revealed in his heart. The Prabhupada, when he came to visit Prabhupada, Prabhupada told him, he said, after I'm gone, promise me you will go to the West and you will preach. I want people like you to go and preach in the West. So he promised Prabhupada, and he did. He went. He went to the United States and different places. And then uh, Bhakti Sundar Govinda Maharaj, who was Srila Sridhar Maharaj's chief secretary, he also told him, when I leave, you please go and you preach in the West. And he did. It's a very interesting story about him when he was going to preach in the West. Bhakti Sundar Govinda Maharaj was reading all of Prabhupada's lectures so he could prepare, you know, how is Prabhupada preaching in the way I want to learn now. So he called my godbrother over. He says, what is this? Every lecture he says the same thing. You're not this body. Sex life is abominable. Why does he keep saying this over and over again? <laughs> no Gaudiya Sannyasi preaches like this. My God, brother, he said, no one can, you cannot understand this. When you go to America, then you'll understand. <laughs> <No way. laughs> so, so, so then when he went to America, you know, and he's preaching there, and he saw that God, brother, he called me, and he goes, yeah, now I understand <laughs> why he was preaching like this. And, and, he had this very intimate relationship with Srila Narayamaraj. Srila Prabhupada had a sister, Kishima. 
We called her Pishma. Her name was Baba Tarini. She was initiated by Saraswati Thakur. She had Hari Nam from him, and she had Diksha from Goswami Maharaj on, on Srila Prabhupada's instruction. So she used to live in the Imli Talamat, which was managed by Goswami Maharaj. And Goswami Maharaj was very poor. He didn't have that much money, and the stairs were all broken. So, so she used to pray to the deity. My son, he has a lot of money. He's a big businessman. His name was Chandra. But, but he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in you. So I don't know what to do. Maybe you could talk to him and he could give money to fix the stairs. <laughs> so, so, Chandra tells the stories that I'm sleeping one night and Krishna comes to me in this dream and I said, why are you here? I don't believe in you. <laughs> he said, well, your mother keeps praying to me that I should come and talk to you. <laughs> so then, so then, <laughs> he says, so what is it that you want? So Krishna said, well, your mother wants that you should fix my stairs on the temple, you know, to go because she wants to walk up the stairs and the stairs are all broken. So he said, I'm not going to give you any money to fix your stairs. He said, all right, don't give it to me. He said, but your mother wants it. So can you do it for your mother? All right, for my mother, I'll give the money. <laughs> so he paid to fix the stairs. So she was a widow, Prabhupada's sister, and she had a very close friend. And they were both called Prabhavati. Uh, they were both called Pishima. But her friend was called Prabhavati, and her name was Bhavaturini, but they were both called Pishima. It means uncle's uh, sister. Yeah. The father's sister. Father's sister, right. Father's sister. Auntie. So, 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 Prabhavati tells all these stories about the different personalities who used to come and see Srila Prabhupada and Radha Damodar. She said that Naraya Maharaj used to go there. And she would come sometimes, and Narayan Maharaj would be there, and they would be cooking together, and then they would sit and do, and then they would sit and have lunch together, and then they would do bhajans together. And she said that so many times Narayan Maharaj used to go to see Srila Prabhupada and Radha Damodar and just spend the day with them. So there was this intimate relationship that they had, very deep relationship, and. When Srila Prabhupada was leaving, he had asked several people, <coughs> Bhakti Bhavatir, and, 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 and his god brother, Bhai Bhakti Maharaj, please go to the West and preach. And he also went. So they all went under the request of this, their dear god brother, god uncle, that you please preach in the West. And Srila Prabhupada especially requested Srila Narayan Maharaj that you please go there and preach in the western countries to my disciples. It was something that he, he wanted. <coughs> now I was there, it's in the folio, you'll see October 8th in the morning. <coughs> I arrive. Tamal Krishna tells Srila Prabhupada, Bhagavat Das has just come from the West. He was collecting money for the Bhuvaneshwar project. Prabhupada recognizes me and then I let some kirtan. So it's there in the folio, October 8th in the morning. It was that night that Srila Narayan Maharaj had the very famous conversation with Prabhupada where Prabhupada asked him to go to the West and preach. And, <clears throat> and to put him in samadhi also. And there's several conversations. Over the course of the time that I was there, over the next few weeks, 
I saw Narayan Maharaj coming, and I remember seeing him the first time, and I was like, wow, he glides. He doesn't walk. He's like my Guru Maharaj. He sort of glides along the ground. <laughs> Just floats. <laughs> so I was like very, you know, impressed with that. And how, you know, he was very, he was very regal, very clean, very austere, very sharp. So I was doing Chaturmas. I did Chaturmas from way down back in the time when Prabhupada was there, where I would eat only one meal a day. Boiled rice and dal, no salt, nothing. And I did this for four months. So I was doing it at the time. I had a beard, you know, and all that. So Narayan Maharaj comes a couple of days later, and he comes into the room. And he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and he's thinking, who is this person with a beard? Everybody else is shaved. He's the only one with a beard. Why does he have a beard? You know, I had a bright red beard, you know. Like, <laughs> big red beard and red hair. <laughs> so he was like, you know, who is this person with a beard? So I went over to him. I said, are you Narayan Maharaj? He said, yes. You're, my, my name is Bhagavad Das Brahmacharya. Oh, he, he's, he went like this. Yeah, like, what, why, what is this? Why are you <laughs> I told him. I'm doing Chaturmas. Ek din, ek bar. In one, one, in one day I eat one time only. Havish means the boiled rice and dal. And I'm explaining to him in my broken Hindi. And he's appreciating that I can speak Hindi. You know. He smiles at me. He's like really happy. So he, he takes my elbow like this. And he said, come with me. I want to take you to see something very special. So he, he brought me over to the side of Srila Prabhupada's bed. And there I am next to Srila Prabhupada's bed and he's pointing at Srila Prabhupada and he said, look, do you see? I'm looking, yeah, I see, he's laying in the bed, you know. <laughs> I have no vision, I'm just a young boy, you know, a brahmachari. He said, look, look at his hands. And Prabhupada's hands were like this, over the top of his head. And he was, you know, laid out like this on the bed. And he said, you see, that's the special mudra. His hands are in the special mudra, he said. And then he said, and look, his head and neck are back, and his back is swayed, and then his feet, his legs are out, and his two feet, his two feet were like this, one look like, you know, on the tippy toes. He said, you see how the feet are? You see everything? He said, this is the dancing pose. He said, right now, your Guru Maharaj is dancing with Radha and Krishna. Prabhupada was in a very deep state of, you know, subconscious, you know, his samadhi. I mean, he was not awake at all. But it, you couldn't call it sleep. I mean, it was like he was very deep. And so then after that, he sang Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, which is the song that is sung at when any Acharya is disappearing. They sing Sri Rupa Manjari Pada prayerfully, hoping you know, praying that Rupa Manjari will come and take the new Saki to the Kunja and introduce them to Radha and Krishna for service. It's in... Now 
Manatandas.org, he wrote all these songs. It's Radha Krishna Pranamore, how he's putting all the chanda and everything on. But the song before that, he says, I'm standing behind Rupa Manjari trembling, trembling. As I'm watching Radha and Krishna approach, I'm trembling. And, and Radharani stops and inquires from Rupa Manjari, who is this young girl behind you? And she said that Manjulali, who is Lokanath Goswami, his guru, Manjulali has brought this young girl to me. And seeing that she's very meek and humble, I'm thinking to engage her in your service. So Radharani then gives her blessing. And then the next song, Radha Krishna Paramahansa, and now he engages in the service. So this is why they sing Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, because it's Rupa Manjari who makes the arrangement to place you in the service of the divine couple. And so he sings it, he sang it, we were weeping. Try Marsh sang so beautifully, Rupa Manjari Pada, so sweetly. All of us were weeping. I was crying. All the devotees were crying because he sang it with such tenderness and love. And so when he finished that, some time later, you know, he left. And he brought some young brahmacharis with him. I think Kirtan Maharaj was there, and there were some others who were there. And they were all, you know, singing with Srila Gurudev. And then he left with them. And about an hour or so later, Srila Prabhupada comes out of his sleep. So they asked Srila Prabhupada, please drink some water. He said, I don't want to drink any water. They said, but Prabhupada, we've measured how much urine you've passed today and how much water you've drunk, and you, you haven't, you've drunk only half the amount of water that you've passed. You're going to dehydrate. Prabhupada said, yes, I know. So then they were saying, so does that mean you're going to leave us? The brother said, tell Tamal Krishna to come in here. I want to talk to him. So Tamal Krishna comes in the room, and Prabhupada looks at him and he said, I was just talking with Krishna. And I went, oh my God. Raya Maharaj said that he was with Radha and Krishna, and now Prabhupada is saying that he was just talking with Krishna. <laughs> That means Narayan Maharaj must be a pure devotee. <laughs> you know, I became like so excited I could understand that they, who he, he who he must really be. On November fourteenth, the day when Srila Prabhupada was leaving, I was at his head. You'll see the pic pictures of me there with the beard. I was still doing Chaturmas. Chaturmas didn't end for like nine days after that. And I was massaging his head. And while I was massaging him, Srila Prabhupada was exhibiting the Astasattvic above. I had read about this in Nectar of Devotion because I had been living with Gaur Govinda Maharaj and he was encouraging me to read the different books and he was actually reading to me from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and explaining it to me in English, and he was reading in the original language, and I was reading Nectar of Devotion and trying to understand, I was reading all about the ecstatic symptoms, you know. So I'm looking, and there's Prabhupada, you know, trembling, roaring, rolling from side to side, belching, oh, you know, and I'm watching, trembling, tears streaming from his eyes and all the different ecstatic symptoms are being exhibited by him. I'm like stunned at the exhibition. Thinking, my God, this is like 
nuclear devotion being played out in reality here, you know. Like Mahaprabhu, when he was in ecstasy in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know, was seeing it. And then, Sri Narayan Maharaj came in. Came in the door, walked behind me, <coughs> kneeled down. I'm only one, I'm right there. He kneeled down next to the bed, and he put his mouth next to Srila Prabhupada's ear, and he recited some mantra. I don't know what it was. I asked him years later, he said, no, I don't, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but he recited some mantra in his ear. As soon as he did, Prabhupada stopped. I was like, oh my God. It's like Sarup Damodar, chanting in the ear of Mahaprabhu when he was in ecstasy, and calming him down, you know, it was like so ecstatic. And then <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada took his hand and he put it up like this over Narayan Maharaj's head. So there was a great intimacy between the two of them. Great intimacy. The next day, Shri Narayamar supervised the whole parikram around Vrindavan to all the sacred temples. If he hadn't been there, we wouldn't have known what to do because at each temple, there was requirements that had to be performed. The, the head Goswami of the temple would come out, he would perform different rituals and arti and everything, and some donation had to be given, some food was donated, some prasadam was given back. I mean, there's a whole... You know, and we didn't know the etiquette, we didn't know the rules, we didn't know the principles, but he knew. He knew. We were just children. And this is why Srila Prabhupada requested him, please do this for me. Because they're very young and they don't know. I haven't had enough time to teach them all these details. So, like a good uncle, he did this for us. I always remembered this about him. I always remembered this about him. And in my own personal relationship with him, years later, when he came to America and he was preaching, he was very kind to me. He was very, very kind to me. He remembered me. He asked me one day, who, who were you? And I told him, I was the one with the red beard. Oh... You remember? Oh, you were that brahmachari. Okay. And from the beginning, he told me, I'm going to help you. You're a preacher. I want you to preach. So he helped me. He helped me to become disentangled from my family life. And I knew that this wasn't just him because I was having dreams and Prabhupada was coming to my room and he was taking my clothes out of the drawer and putting them in the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gorgo Maharaj came in one dream and he was leading a Sankirtan party. He said, what are you doing there? Get out of there. Come over here with me. Come on the Sankirtan. So I was having these dreams. So they were telling me that it's time time, you know, you've done your Grihasta Ashram, now you have to move on. We sent Raya Maharaj to pull you out. So, I took it that I was, that he was, you know, that Prabhupada was coming in him for me. He always knew though, he said to me one day, he said, I know. In your heart, there's only your problem. That's all. I know. I said, yes, but I see him in you. He said, I understand. He said, but I know he's your first love. <laughs> but he completely understood me, who I was, and what the meaning was you know, of the relationship between us. But 
he did for me what Srila Prabhupada would have done had he been present at the time. Pulled me out. Moved me forward. Helped me to make progress in my spiritual life. So for this I owe him a great debt of gratitude. Great debt of gratitude. His preaching helped to open up after I, I, I had read all the books when I was living with Srila Gorgo in the Maharaj and I'd gotten so much from it, but when I reread everything under his guidance, it opened up again like newer and newer layers of information, deeper and deeper. The purport spoke to me. <coughs> Prabhupada's purport spoke to me in a special way. And I got to understand the meaning of Satam Prasangam Mamavirya Sampido Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata how the transcendental sound vibration of the sadhu enters through your ear and touches your heart and changes your consciousness. So I owe him a great debt of gratitude on his disappearance day. I must offer him my most humble prostrated obeisances and beg forgiveness for any offenses that I have committed to him in the discourse of executing my devotional service or in preaching. But he asked me to do certain things. He asked me to be like a mother to all the younger devotees, which I try to do. He asked me to preach the fundamentals of Krishna consciousness, specifically some bandhagyan to everyone because of my comprehension of the topic. And he asked me to preach in some new places, which I haven't done quite yet, but I'm in the process of arranging that. So today I offer my most prostrated, humble obeisances at his feet, and I thank him from the bottom of my heart for all the blessings and mercy that he gave me. He gave me sannyas. He gave me the opportunity to preach this mission of Krishna consciousness. On behalf of my Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, and I thank him sincerely for the gifts that he's given to you. Shiva Guru Dev Ki Shachiputram Atra Surupam Rupam Tasyagraja Muripuri Maturim Goshtuayati Radha Rabto yes, Pratita Kripaya Sri Guru Tamnatos Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhika Itadali Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Anandali Lamaya Vikrahaya Hema Badibyat Javi Sundaraya 
Tasmay maha premara sapradaya Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Bhaktya vina aparada lakshay First of all, I have for my sister Dandavat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, Asmadiya Parmarada Tamaguru Pada Padma, Nitya Leela Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Ashto Tarasatu Sisimad, Rupa Nuga Charivarya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Yeah. Secondly, I have for my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Sri Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. Amen. And finally, I have for my pranam at the lotus feet of Param Puja Pad, Sri Bhaktivedanta, Bhagavat Maharaj, and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. By the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Goranga, today we are observing the Tirabhav Titi, the disappearance festival, Viraha Mahotsav, the separation festival, from the lotus feet of our holy master, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. We are unlimitedly indebted to Sri Pad Bhaktivedanta Bhagavat Maharaj for expressing his experience and realization of the very profound and intimate relationship between my Gurudev and his Guru. Srila Prabhupada, he mentioned that Srila Prabhupada wrote that when the first time I saw you, I looked upon you with such love. In the same way as my Gurudev looked upon me when the first time he saw me. And then in the next <coughs> sentence he wrote that our relationship is on the platform of Raghunuga Bhakti. Spontaneous devotional service. So there are many opinions about the identity of Srila Prabhupada. But Srila Prabhupada himself has said that he ha his relationship with Srila Narayan Raj is on the platform of Raghunuga Bhakti. So we should accept Srila Narayan Raj's uh, verdict as endorsed and uh, 
and directly by Srila Prabhupada himself. So, my holy master, he used to honor all appearance and disappearance days of our great Acharyas in a particular way. He was very particular about this. And that is that first of all, before describing the Vyasti Guru, Vyasti Guru means the individual spiritual master. One should first glorify the Samasti Guru, that is the principle of Guru Dattva. And then, after that, one can illustrate how that Samasti Guru, the principle of the Akanda Guru Tattva, undivided Guru Tattva, is present in the individual Vyasti Guru. So, our Srila Vishnu Chakritakur has given the most nectarian description of Guru Tattva in his Gurvastaka. Samsara dhava nalalit haloka tranaya karunyaga naganatva praptasya gunanavasya vande grosi charna ravindam praptasya kalyana gunanavasya I pray to my Holy Spiritual Master. All the living beings in this world are burning in the blazing fire of material existence with no recourse, no respite, no way out. And see Krishna, oh, he is the ocean of mercy, but the ocean is far away from the forest fire. How will the forest fire be uh, extinguished? Only if the water from the ocean will take the form of a cloud and travel there and then rain down upon the fire, then it will be extinguished. So in the same way, Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandho Jayapate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute. That Radha Kanta, the beloved of Shimati Radhika, he himself is an ocean of mercy. And the entire mercy of Sri Krishna as condensed into the form of a cloud and that form is my Gurudev. So Sri Guru is called Krishna Kripa Sri Murti. It is the form of Sri Krishna in which Sri Krishna bestows his mercy. Yadya Piyamara Guru Chaitanya Radhas Tatapi Janya Ami Tahara Prakash Though I know that my spiritual master is a servant of Chaitanya Mahapu, Chaitanya Radhas, but at the same time, Ntatapi Janiya Ami, Tahara Prakash, Gurudev is the Prakash, manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the Prakash Vigraha of Chaitanya Mahapu, first Prakash Vigraha is Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is the Baladev himself. He is the Adhisthatri Devata of Sandini Shakti. Mm -hmm. Sandini Shakti means eternal existence. So, uh, in this world we are overwhelmed by many desires. Prajati, Yadakamam, Saravam, Partha, Manogatam. Krishna said, Arjun asked, what is the symptom of a person who is in Samadhi, mm -hmm. transcendental consciousness? See, Krishna said, that person has given up all desires which are born from the unsteady mind. So, when the mind is unsteady, then that unsteadiness of the mind manifests in the form of material desires and material attachments. How will the, this oscillating, turbulent heart become steady and thereby free from all attachment to the physical plane? When Sri Krishna was fighting with Vyomasur in Kamyavha, mm -hmm. so when they were fighting, it was such a tremendous battle, the whole earth was shaking. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Balaram Prabhu, he pressed down on the earth 
with his lotus foot. There's a footprint there in Kalmyavan, near the cave, cave of the Omasur. And it shows that when Baladev Prabhu, in, that, in the form of Gurudev, places his lotus feet on the heart of the disciple, then the Sandini Shakti makes the heart nirvikar, completely steady. Hmm? He has a stira buddhi now, stir buddhi, steady intelligence. And then on the platform of Sandini Shakti, then Samvit Sri Krishna and Ladini Radhika can dance. Ah. So this is why in the beginning we see Guru Tattva, Gurudev, as the manifestation of Balaram Prabhu or Nityananda Prabhu, because he makes the heart steady. And when the heart is steady, then after that we see, see Guru as... Hmm? Nikunja you know Ratike Lisi Dei Yaya Libi Yutia Pekshania Tatrati Dasha Attiva Basia Vande Kuroshi Mahabhav Chintamani Radharas Rup Lalitadi Saki Tarak Kaya Vyua Roop. The gopis, the Sakis of Radhika, are Radhika's own Kaya Vyua Roop, her expansions. Hmm? So once Padmanabhraji has Gurudev. Hmm. So in the beginning we see Guru as the manifestation of Baladev, the manifestation of Dittinandabhu. But later we see Gurudev as the uh, manifestation of Radhika, as a Saki. Hmm? So at which stage? Does our vision become from one to the next? Mm. Srila Gurudev said, Asakti. Mm. In the stage of Asakti. Because in that stage, Nishta Ruchi Asakti. In the stage of Asakti, then one has the first rudimentary realization, the Abbas of one Siddha Srup. Mm. And in one's own Siddha Srup, one can uh, follow one's Gurudev in his Siddha Surup. Mm -hmm. So, this is the qualification of Sadguru. Nikunja Yuno Ratikali Siddha. The spiritual master is the maid servant Dasi of Radhika and very expert in all types of services to the divine couple. Mm -hmm. What type of services? Especially cheating the mother-in-law, <laughs> cheating the husband, cheating the sakis from the other parties, from the anti-party of Chandravali, and even sometimes cheating Krishna himself. Sila Rupa Goswami Pada is saying, Oh, when, as Rupa Manjri, will I prepare Radhika to sneak out of the house? Hmm? If she'll sneak out of the house with her ankle bells jingling, then Jutila, mother-in-law may hear, or Abhimanyu. So first of all, I have to bind her ankles with a dark cloth to muffle, hmm? to stop the ankle bells from ringing. And on the dark moon night, I'll cover her in a dark bluish, bluish cloth. Hmm? And in this way, she can sneak out from the house without being seen. And then I'll bring her, hmm? not to where Krishna is waiting, but to somewhere else nearby. And then from there, I'll go to see Krishna. And Krishna, seeing me, Krishna knows, he's, Krishna is very much overjoyed seeing a dasi of Radhika, because he knows Radhika must be there. Seeing me, Krishna will become elated. Hmm? Oh, where is Radhika? And then I'll tell him, unfortunately, her mother-in-law is keeping her under lock and key, and there was no way to bring her out of the house tonight. I regret to inform you. And then Krishna will fall to his knees and weep, alas, alas. And then I'll say, only joking. <laughs> She's nearby, come with me. <laughs> Just so Krishna knows his place. <laughs> this is Nikunja Yuno Ratikali Siddhaya Yaya Libi Uktira Pikshani. 
Tattati Dakshad Atti Vallabhas. Vande Guru Shri Charanavarta. So that is the full Guru Tattva. Srila Rupa Goswami Pada has explained in Upadesh Amrita. Vacho Vegam, Manasakroda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Uttar Pasta Vegam, Ethan Vegam, Yovishahit Dira, Sarvam Mapimam Pratibhim Sasisyat. A person who has controlled the urge to speak, the demands of the mind, who has controlled anger, who has controlled the urges of the tongue, the belly and the genitals, is fit to make disciples all over the world. But that is not full guru, that is only partial guru. A person may have full control over their senses. But if they are not nikunja yuno ratikali siddhaya yali be yuktira pakshani, they are not fully guru tattva. They can be partially. And they should always remain under the guidance of those who are serving in that plane. So this is guru tattva. Iswaraya janma titi jehe no pavitra sei mata vaishnavera titi racharitra. In Chaitanya Bhagavata it is said that just as the appearance day of Sri Krishna in this world is so auspicious and glorious, so in the same way, not less, the appearance and disappearance of the Vaishnavas are similarly glorious. So we should not consider that today is anything less than Jan- Janmastami or Radhastami or Guru Purnima. So, now we are coming to the, from the Samasti Guru Tattva to the Vyasti Guru Tattva. Our Guru Dev appeared in this world in 1921 on Mauni Amavasya. So generally according to astrology, it is said that if someone is born on the dark night, the Amavasya, then they will be a thief. Hmm? So this is quite correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and anyone who knows, anyone who has met our Gurudev knows. You were men- mentioning our very dear associate and friend, see Tamil Krishna Goswami. So of course he was always coming and hearing so much from Srila Gurudev. But he got squeezed into a difficult situation at some point. So at that point he had to kind of disavow somewhat, though it was not his heart's desire. Uh, so when mm. uh, my Gurudev was first going to Fiji, Fiji, yeah, I went with him preaching in Fiji, yeah. And uh, at the time there, uh, Tamil Krishna Maharaj was uh, in charge of that area at the time, and he had instructed the devotees, if Srila Narayan Maharaj comes to the temple, then you should give pranam and respect him and give a garland. He said, but don't look in his eyes. <laughs> I'm just saying this in connection with the uh, Moni Amavasya. <laughs> because only from his eyes, from his glance, from his Kripa Kataksh, in a moment, he could steal your heart forever and put it in his pocket. <laughs> huh? Such a transcendental personality. Mm-hmm. I remember once we were in uh, Badger, yeah. and it was in the morning walk, and there was a devotee, and he'd heard so many criticisms, so he was very skeptical. But anyway, he could not control his curiosity. <laughs> so he came to the Badger festival to see what's going on. <laughs> so he came for one year, but he was looking, you know, with squinty eyes. Uh, but then the next year anyway, still, despite his reluctance, he came the next year. So, and he came for about five, five or six years in a row. And finally he could not resist anymore. And on the morning walk, he came to Srila Gurudev and he finally plucked up the courage after many years. And he, and he said, Oh Maharaj, please, I want to surrender to you and I want to give you my heart. Gurudev said, no, it's too contaminated. (laughs) (laughs) And then everyone's heart stopped. There was a pin drop silence. (laughs) Then he smiled. He said, I'll give you mine. (laughs) (laughs) So, Moni Amavasya, he was born. 1921. (laughs) 
because he is a thief of hearts. <laughs> and taking those hearts and making them very soft and fragrant, like flowers, and he's offering him at the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Mone Amavasya has another significance. Hmm? During the Kumbha Mela in Prayag, which is for two months, and the Mone Amavasya is the middle day, and that is the day of the Mahasnan. Hmm. Everyone, there are other days for Snan, for bathing, but that is the day of the Mahasnan where the most people want to go. Because that is the day that the Amrita. There was a battle between the, there was a churning between demons and demigods. They started fighting over the Amrita and, and some drops were spilt and they fall down in the confluence of Ganga and Jamuna there. So everyone wants to take bath in the morning of the Moni Amavasya on that day because that is the day that the Amrita, the nectar, fell to earth. So Srila Gurudev said, mm, when the Shastra is saying you should take bath on this day because the nectar falls to earth, this is called Loka Sangraha, only to collect the imagination of the general people and engage them in an activity that will bring about auspiciousness in their life. Because when you go to the holy place, what is the nectar? Susustro sradadanasya vasudeva kataruchi sanmayat sevya vipra punya tirtha nisevanat. The holy place means the sadhus. And by seeing them, serving them, and hearing from them, one develops a taste in the nectar of Harikata. That is the actual significance of Kumbha Mela. Hmm? The Kumbha, that means the pure devotees, Bhakti Rasa Patra, the pots full of Amrita, Bhakti Rasa. Hmm? That is the reason to go to the holy place. And anyone who thinks otherwise is a donkey. Saiva <laughs> Gokara. <laughs> So, also, perhaps you know that in that place at the confluence of Prayag, you know, Ganga and Jamuna in Prayag, that is Dashashwamedha Ghat, the place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, hmm, he met with Srila Rupa Goswami. Uh, and there he said to him, Para para sunya gabir bhakti rasu sindhu, Toma chaka ite kahita e kabindu. Hey Rupa, the ocean of bhakti rasa is unlimited. It has no shore in any direction. It is so deep, this ocean has no ocean bed. So just to make you understand what is this bhakti rasa, I will give you one drop. And it was as if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the finger of Rupa Goswami, dipped it in the ocean of bhakti rasa and then said, taste this. And tasting only what was touching the end of his finger, Rupa Goswami became intoxicated and manifested. <laughs> Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ujwa Nilamani, Vidagda Madhav, Lalit Madhav, Dan Kali Komadi, all the poems of Stava Mala, Hamsadut, and all these things by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that place is also the place where the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The drops were given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Srila Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. So our Gurudev, he appeared on the Moni Amabasya. That means the day when the droplets of the nectar of Bhakti Rasa <coughs> that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to Srila Rupa Goswami descended to this world in the form of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami. Mm -hmm. So he was born in the village of Tiwaripur in Bihar. So uh, his family name was Tiwari. Uh, Tiwari means Trivedi. So very high class Brahmins, expert in three Vedas. Mm. And his um, father and family for many generations, they were in the Sri Sampradaya. And they were worshipping Sita Ram. Mm. Because that place it was close to the bank of the Ganga and very close to the place where Lord Ram delivered Ahalya and also Kevat, mm. the boatman Kevat. Mm. So it was a very holy place. But out of humility, Srila Gurudev used to say, Oh, I am from a Bihar, that is the place of uh, Magadha Raj, Jarasandha, mm. a big demon. That place is also Pan Pandava Varjita Desh, 
Though the Pandavas, when they were in exile, hmm, uh, during the exile, they traveled everywhere, but they, that's the place where they never went. So he said it's a very inauspicious place because it was rejected by the Pandavas. <laughs> and also the BR is the place of Buddha. And Buddha is most extremely uh, antagonistic to Shuddha Bhakti, the Shunyavad, uh, uh, voidism. So out of humility, Gurudev would say, I, because of my sins, I am born in this way. Uh, when he was a small baby, he used to sit very peacefully, not crying or screaming or anything. So his grandmother gave him the name Bolanas, because just as Lord Shiva, he sits peacefully without being disturbed. He was like that as a baby. Mm. But uh, his family name, given name was Sriman Narayan. Sriman Narayan. So when he was mm, at school, he, when he was about uh, 11 or 12 years old, there was a Sanskrit debate in the school and he won the Sanskrit debate. And the prize for winning the debate was a book uh, about, it was the life of uh, Nimbadicha Acharya, Nimbarka Acharya. And so as a childhood, Gurudev was very interested in history and he read this. And when he read about the life of the great Acharya, uh, Nimbaditya, his intense sadhana and his devotion and his asraddha in the holy names, then Srila Gurudev was very impressed. And that was how he said, then really his faith in the chanting of the holy name was awakened uh, by reading this. And he mm, studied, the, he was studying Indian history and when he came to the medieval period, he studied about a great reformer in West Bengal named Sri Krishna Chaitanya. <laughs> and he discovered, oh, how this person is so dedicated to the holy name, the power of the, of the holy name. And his uh, father took him to one festival of the, in the place of Ahalya. And there, for the first time in his life, in his childhood, he saw a Maha Sankirtan. And it made a very uh, profound impression on him. And from then, he began to chant so much. Harinam, always. His uh, uh, Kula Guru used to give class especially, and his other family members also, and uncles, they used to give class on Ramayan. And from childhood he was absorbed in the pastimes of Sita Ram and Lakshman and Hanuman. And he used to chant their names and weep. And sometimes in his dreams he would see Sita Ram and Lakshman and Hanuman. Then once his Kula Guru gave a Bhagavad Kata for one month. One month Srimad Bhagavatam. And so Srimad Bhagavatam is especially uh, focusing in the 10th canto, culminates in the pastimes of Sri Krishna. And within that also, really the glories of Braja Gopis and Radhika. And then, when he began to hear the Bhagavatam deeply for the first time from his Kula Guru, he felt some attraction in his heart towards Sri Krishna. So his parents arranged his marriage when he was about 17. Hmm? And so he was married and he uh, was an officer in the police force. So you cannot imagine what it's like in Bihar in the 1930s, right? Riding a horse with a gun <laughs> everywhere. I mean, even, even today Bihar can be quite wild. Uh, you know, when Sanatan Goswami was traveling from um, Puri and going to Vrindavan, hmm? uh, not from uh, Puri, when he escaped from the, the prison of the Nawab Hussain Shah in Bengal, and he was going to, when he came through Bihar, that's the place where the, the, the Dakoids, right. tried, they wanted to kill him. Yeah, so it was famous for, for a lot of outlaws and that there. So he was very athletic. Uh, he was a champion in, in, in athletics also and a very um, energetic police officer there and gradually got promoted to a high, high position in the police force. During that time, some preachers from Bengal came 
to Bihar. One, his name was Narutam Ananda. Another's name was Radhanath. Das Adhikari. So Narutam Ananda later became famous of, as Bhakti Kamal Madhusudan Maharaj. And Radhanath Das Adhikari became Parampujapa Srila Bhakti Ranta Trivikram Goswami Maharaj. <laughs> so they came to his village. And, uh, uh, but Narutam Ananda, he was giving class for seven days only on the glories the, of the devotion of Prahlad Maharaj in Bengali. Uh, because uh, actually one of the, the, the higher up policemen in, in Gurudev station was from Bengal and he'd invited him to come. So then after the Qatar, then Gurudev would sit down with him and he didn't know Hindi. Narutamanan didn't know Hindi and Gurudev didn't know Bengali. So the only common language they had with each other to speak was English. So he pre this was the first Gaudiya preaching to Gurudev was in English. <laughs> and Gurudev later, when he was very old, he said, oh, it was an omen. <laughs> it was an omen of the future, <laughs> that later I would have to speak everywhere, all over the world in English. So he first heard the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in English. And then he became very much attracted to Radha and Krishna. And now he was conflicted because of his whole life. Huh? He was uh, dedicated to Sita Ram. So then one night in a dream he saw a chariot and Ram and Lakshman were driving on a chariot and they came up to him and then they stepped down and, and Lord Ram says, you should not be in any anxiety. There's no difference between Krishna and myself. I am the uh, Vilas Vigra of Sri Krishna. So I give you my blessing. You serve Radha and Krishna. So then... He felt no uh, internal conflict about dedicating himself to the service of Radha and Krishna in the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, mm, one day he was talking with one of his mm, friends and his friend said, I am going to renounce the world. Good I said, why? What happened? He said, well, mm, just a few days before, in the morning time, I woke up very early and I was sitting and chanting the holy names. And I became so absorbed in chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Madhuram, Madhuram, Itan, Mangalam, Mangalanam. The holy name is the sweetest of all sweet things. And I became absorbed in that, I forgot about everything. And I could not stop chanting. And on that day, it was, I had to go to the office and I had very important work to do that day. But I was just chanting and I could not stop. The holy name had possessed me and would not let me go. So then the next day I was thinking, Oh, I am, what am I doing? I should do bhajan. I'll go to the office and they'll probably be really angry with me because I didn't do my job. And I'm ready to give my resignation. So he said, I went to the office and there I was met by my superior. And uh, the superior said, uh, oh, you, you will receive a promotion. <laughs> and he said, and why? He said, for your good work yesterday. He said, I didn't come yesterday. He said, look, you have signed here. And he showed him the book where he'd signed in. And then he said, no, no need to discuss anymore. And then he was in shock and he told Gurudev, he said, I know that that time Krishna was true to his word. Ananyas chintayantumam yejana paryupasate tesham nityabhiyoktanam yoga sema vahamyaham To those who are always dedicated to serving me with love, whatever they have I protect it and whatever they need I carry that myself. Hmm? And that at that time when I was doing bhajan, Krishna himself took my form and came and did all the work and he did it so well, I was recommended for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> he said, so now I have a full uh, faith that Krishna and all circumstances will maintain me. So what is the use of going on with this work? I am <laughs> renouncing everything. So when Gurudev heard this, he was very impressed. And the seeds were coming in his heart also. If he should do it, why not me? <laughs> hmm? 
So then, Gurudev went to his the office, and at that time, there was a very important case going on in another department, and the file of that case had been lost. And now the chief of police there was, he was completely disturbed because some judges were coming and they had to prepare the case and they'd lost the file and there was a panic in the office. So then that uh, chief came to Srila Gurudev and said, Oh, Sriman Narayan, Tiwari Ji, you please help us look for this file. Gurudev said, Actually, I have nothing to do with this case. I don't know what this file looks like. It's not part of my department. He said, anyway, just help us because it will give some more support for the other department. They're panicking. So then Gurudev got up and he went and, you know, bureaucracy in those days, nothing was on computer, right? So there's all thousands of dusty files everywhere. And somehow the, the inspiration came in Gurudev's heart. He said, if I close my eyes and wherever I put my hand, I find this file. I promise you, Krishna, I will leave everything forever and serve you. Gurudev closed his eyes, he put his hand on the, on the files and he pulled out one and he opened it and that was the missing file. <laughs> <laughs> the police chief and all the others there were panicking, they started to dance. Jai, Jai, well done, well done. <laughs> and then Gurudev said to that chief, he said, I want to resign. Just, what are you talking about? Uh, what will you do? Hmm? Gurudev said, I want to do business. <laughs> said, what kind of business do you want to do? I want to do a business which is all profit and no loss. <laughs> you know, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Neha bikrama na shosti praktivaya navidyate sopamapa siddharmasya Mm -hmm. try try yeah. On this path there's no loss, there's no diminution. Mm -hmm. He could not openly say because he would not be able to convince him. So then he, he was very concerned, he said, well, what about your mother and father? Do your parents know? Do they agree? He said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he had not discussed with his mother and father, but he said, yes. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Guru is father. And Shastra is mother. So I said, do mother and father agree? Yes. <laughs> Guru agrees and Shastra agrees. <laughs> so that, and then he gave his resignation and uh, very secretly in the middle of the night, just like Raghunath Das Goswami, being from a very aristocratic family, he ran away from home. Mm -hmm. So Gurudev, he put some pillows underneath his blanket and made it look like he was lying in the bed and in the middle of the night he left and he traveled and he took a train to uh, Bengal to Navadip Dham, the train station called Navadip Dham. So he arrived there in the middle of the night at midnight the train arrived and he'd never been to Bengal before in his life. He didn't know where the mat was or anything. Uh, and he'd never met Srila Bhakti Pragyankesha. He'd only heard about him from... And he'd written some letters that had some exchange of letters. And in the middle of the night, Gurudev got down from the train onto the station there. And he was wondering, you know, I don't know which way to go. And he saw a lantern, a kerosene lantern, swinging along the platform. And someone was calling, Tiwariji! <laughs> Tiwari ji, hmm? are you Tiwari ji? He said, yes, I am Tiwari. He said, Gurudev sent me to bring you to the mat. So actually no one knew that he was arriving or what time or anything. Gurudev said, how did he know? That person who came to meet him, his name was Sajjan Seva Kabrahmachari. And later he became famous by the name of Panam Pujapad Sila Bhakti Danta Vaman Goswami Maharaj, whose appearance day it is today. <laughs> because Srila Gurudev disappeared on his god brother's appearance day because of their deep love for each other. So then Sajjag Seva Brahmachari, he just 
without any surprise, just said, oh, Gurudev is uh, Savagya, omniscient, so he sent me. <laughs> Krishna told him you were coming, and so he sent me. And then he brought Gurudev to the mat. So Gurudev, he arrived at the mat and he gave pranam at the feet of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami. And he said, O oh, Gurudev, whatever love I had, for my mother, my father, for my wife and my children and all, all I am collecting together and offering that at your lotus feet. And Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavaj, tears came in his eyes and he embraced him. This was the first meeting of our Gurudev in this world, with his Gurudev in this world. This is why in the Pranam Mantras it, there is the Many Pranam Mantras, they have this phrase, Bhutale. Namon Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Simati Bhaktivedanta Swami Iti Namine. Means Bhutale. In this world, he's known as Bhaktivedanta Swami. In that world, he's Manjuri. And that's the Radhika. So Bhutale indicates this. So, it was a very sweet and intimate meeting between Vinod Manjari, our Param Gurudev, and our Gurudev, Ramana Manjari. So from the very beginning, he engaged himself in most menial services. In those days there was no electricity, and the kerosene lanterns would become black after one night. So he used to clean all the kerosene lanterns in, in the mud. He used to wash the pots in the kitchen. And at that time, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj was doing the construction of Devananda Gorimat. And the bricks were coming in boats along the Ganga mm, to the Panchaveni mm, on the bank of the Ganga. And so Sila Gurudev from that area, the Aparad Banjan part where Devananda Gorimat was, the whole day from morning <coughs> to night, he was going to the Ganga, loading up all the bricks on his head and then carrying them from the boat and then putting them down for building and going back again all day like this so though he was from a very aristocratic Trivedi Brahmin family and he was very highly placed also in the, the police force but now he was working just like a menial servant because he understood how do we receive the Anubhava, Anubhuti, realization of Sri Krishna? Not by reading books, not by giving learning discourses. Nayama papravachane na labyo na meida na abhuna sutena ma meiva se vrinute te na labyasta se sa ma vivrinute tanum swam. Not by being <coughs> greatly intelligent. No. The Supreme Lord only reveals Himself to those whom He chooses. And who. To whom does he bestow his mercy? That person who has served his devotees. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, Gurudev was serving in so many capacities. And from his childhood, he and, he and his family, they're very interested in music and singing. So he was very much attracted to the kirtans of Srila Bhakti Thakur and Srila Narottam Das Thakur. And from the beginning, he was learning from Srila Trivikram Maharaj. Mm -hmm. So Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj was very gentle with him. He never used to chastise him. He was the only non-Bengali living in the mat. But uh, Srila Trivikram Maharaj used to chastise him. But with love. So one day Srila Gurudev was learning the song. E mana dormati shangsara bittori Podia Achinu Ahami. Was it? Oh, Sri Chaitani Mahaprabhu. I am a very wicked minded person. And because of this, I have fallen into this dark world of material existence. But one of your Mahat Kona Mahajane, one of your dear devotees came to me and said, Oh, wretched soul, I have some good news for you. Krishna himself has appeared in Nadia along with his brother, the Avadut, Nityananda Prabhu. And they have ferried so many persons just like you across the ocean of material existence. 
So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, hearing this news from that great Mahajan, now I am come and surrendering myself at your lotus feet and requesting you to bestow your mercy upon me. So Srila Gurudev was singing this, and Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshmaj was in his room and he could hear this very sweet singing from the core of the heart. And he was moved by that. And he made, and he got up and who is singing? Who is singing? They told him that uh, Sriman Narayan is singing. And he went there and saw. And then from that day, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj always engaged him as a very prominent Kirtaniya when they would go preaching and he would ask someone to sing. He used to ask our Gurudev to sing. Because how he would sing from the heart? Hmm? If you hear, you were discussing the disappearance festival of Srila Prabhupada. So on that day, our Gurudev sang Jai Nilo Prema Dhana, the disappearance song. And the recording is there. And if you hear it, your hairs will stand on end. Have you heard this recording? Srila Narayam Raj singing Jai Nilo Prema Dhana in front of Srila Prabhupada when he's just disappeared from this world. It's incredible. I think even an atheist, his heart will break hearing. I heard it in person. And Maharaj heard in person. <laughs> you cannot be the same again. After, if you hear in, hearing recording is powerful, but hearing in person. Because this Shabda Brahma is imbued with, the sound is imbued with the Bhav. Just like our Gurudev before class, he always used to pray Mangala Charanam. And the last verse, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Na Jiva Mitaya Bina, Iti Vikyaya Devi Tam. It is from the end of Srila Raghunath Taskaswami's Vilap Kusumanjali, where at the end of his pastimes in this world, when he's lost everyone, his Diksha Guru, his Shiksha Gurus, Sunat Mahaprabhu, Srok Damodar, Roy Ramananda, and Srila Sanatan Goswami, and even Srila Rupa Goswami have all disappeared from this world. And he's alone and feeling, I have not attained the goal of my life. And he's crying, Oh Radhika, Tavaivas me, Tavaivas me. I am yours, I am yours, I cannot live without you. Itivi Gyaya Devi, Knowing this, Oh Devi, please bring me to your lotus feet. So when Srila Gurudev used to say this verse, if anyone was serving him, they could. it was as if you could hear the very pitiful crying of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami in the middle of the night. Directly. Huh? So there is a quality of in Kirtan. Hmm? Those who are in this world, who are in, in that world, transcendental world, who are abs absorbed, always living in the association of Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami. Once I was with Srila Gurudev in in an island in the Philippines, Cebu. And he was staying by the ocean there. And in the morning he would walk and chant Japa. And seeing the ocean, all the Udipan of Jagannath Puri was there. So Gurudev, Srila Gurudev came to me, he said, Always be with Srila Raghunath Das Goswami in Jagannath Puri. Huh? Meaning that those were his glorious days. When every, at the end of the night, when the night was over, Sarup Damodaga Swami would come directly from the Gambira, where he'd been with Mahaprabhu, seeing the in, tremendous madness of separation in, in, of Mahaprabhu in the Gambira. And Sarup Damodaga would then return to his ashram at Sat Satasan Tila. And, Rag and Raghunath Daska Swami, very young, would be waiting there for him to come and give Pranam. What, please tell me what happened. And he would relate directly first-hand experience of Mahapu's pastimes in the Gambira to him. So if you will always remember these pastimes, to live there, don't live in North Carolina. <laughs> hmm? Be in Puri, be in Navadi, be in Braj. By heart. You cannot be there physically, but by heart be there, by always hearing the lives, uh, the biographies, the Jivan Charitra of the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> Being a vice now is not to wear, just wearing tilak and having a funny hairstyle. Hmm? A Vaishnava is absorbed, avesh, completely absorbed in Gora Lila. Gora Prema Rasanave, Se Taranga Jeva Dube, Se Radha Madhavan Taranga. And those who are sinking in the ocean of love for Gauranga, sinking in the nectar of that Gora Lila, then they are become internally the associates of Radha Madhav in Vrindavan. Hmm? Those who will immerse themselves in Nidai Ghat, in Navadvip, who come up at Keshi Ghat in Vrindavan. So, our Param Gurudev, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj, recognized the quality of the Kirtan of Gurudev. One day, Sila Gurudev, it was the, it was the noon arti, and no one was there for the arti. Gurudev came and he took a merdanga and started playing and singing. Yasho Martinandana Brajaparanagara Gokul Ranjana Kana. So, though his singing was very beautiful, but he was not so good at Madanga playing. And Param Gurudev could hear the singing in the distance and he was so attractive. So, he got up and he ran there. And he took the Murdanga from Gurudev and put it on himself. <laughs> and now Gurudev was singing and Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshwar, was playing Murdanga and dancing. <laughs> so Gurudev was singing for Radhavinod Bihari and, and his Gurudev was playing Murdanga and he was watching. And he said, the charming way in which he was playing the Murdanga and dancing at the same time, it was so aprakrita, supernatural. He thought, only an eternal associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can play Murdanga and dance in this sweet way. Hmm? And of course, those associates of Mahaprabhu, they are playing Murdanga and singing. Huh? Where? In the Rasalila of Radha and Krishna. Taita, 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 tiki, 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 tak, trimiki, trimiki, bopatam, bopatam, tam, and dancing. And saying the, these are the Murdanga mantras from Rasalila. So, Srila Gurudev, he was traveling everywhere with his spiritual master. On uh, Gora Punima, in uh, 1940, uh, when was it? Six. Yeah. <coughs> this is Diksha, in 1946. He received Diksha, Harinam and Diksha together. And Param Gurudev gave him the name Gaur Narayan. His name before was Narayan, but now became Gaur Narayan, because Narayan has a golden swarup. And uh, he was traveling everywhere with Gurudev, with his Param Gurudev, with his Gurudev. So at that time there was one young Brahmachari named Ananga Mohan Brahmachari. And he sang very sweetly and played Murdanga and he used to cook for Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. Quite young and very <coughs> beautiful. Brahmachari. But when they were traveling, he uh, was struck with tuberculosis. So Param Gurudev took him to so many places to try to cure him, but it was not working and after some time, then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj had to go to somewhere else for preaching and couldn't take him. So he wanted someone to look after this sick boy, but no one wanted to do it, because in those days you associate with someone with tuberculosis then there's a great chance that you'll get it and uh, maybe there's no cure. So, no one wanted to do it. But Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshamaj told uh, Gaur Narayan, Oh, can you, you, you take care of him? And, so, and he agreed. Gurudev agreed. So, he was looking after him and his health deteriorated more and more and he was in great pain. And the boy, he could not move. He was passing stool and urine in the bed. He was vomiting blood. His lungs were full of blood. And Gurudev was washing his bed and changing his clothes. It was very, and very infectious as well. And then, just towards the last moment of his life, though previously looked as if he was in pain, he became very serene and smiling. And he was sh shining. And he kept saying, Oh, Gurudev is calling me. 
Gorni Thai are calling me. Oh, Gorni Thai, Gorni Thai. Oh, Radhavin Od Bihari, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then Srila Gurudev ran and he held the feet of the boy and he put the boy's feet on his head. He said, take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then very happily, he said, oh, Radha Krishna calling, I'm going. Gurudev is calling. And he left. And then Gurudev, he said, that that very moment in his life, though you should understand that Gurudev already had Guru Nishta, very powerful faith in, in the service of Guru. Uh, he said, from that moment, my Guru Nishta became double. Hmm? This boy, he was not well educated. He was not so learned. Hmm? But he was very simply serving his spiritual master with his whole life and soul in a simple way. And what was the result? In the last moment, he was having the darshan of Gornitai, having the darshan of Radha Krishna, and his Gurudev took him to the spiritual world. So then, Gurudev said, from that moment, my Guru Nishta doubled. Hmm. Yeah, Sila Gurudev, he grew up listening to the Ramayana. Hmm. You know the Ramayana? Hmm. When Lord Ram, he was told, you have to go to the forest. It was the day before his coronation, he was told, you have to go to the forest. Your father is telling, you have to go to the forest. Give up the kingdom. Hmm. For 14 years. Uh, that very joyfully accepted it. He did not think, wait a minute, what is this? Why would my father do this? This is not fair. And actually, it was he was blackmailed into it by his wife, Kai Kai, and, and complained. <laughs> Happily, whatever he is good. And Lord Ram said, Aham hi vasana dragya patayam apipavake bakshayam bisham tiksnam madjayam it means, oh, what my father, that is Gurujan, what my Gurujan will tell, eh, if they tell me to fall into flames of a fire, if they tell me to jump in the middle of the ocean, if they tell me to drink poison, eh, I must do it. So Srila Gurudev grew up with the, that nishta, for that honor for Lord Ramachandra and his example and his pastimes. He said, but after this experience, my Guru Nishta became double. So this is one of these very special qualities of Gurudev, is Aprakrita Sardha, supernatural faith in Guru. That even a person, that even they're not doing so much chanting Harinam so much, or doing so much bhajan or anything. But if they have a Sraddha, Nahami jam prajati vyam tapasa pasame inacha tusyam atma guru susru srayayata. Krishna said, I am not so pleased by your puja. I am not so pleased by your the remembering mantras. I am not so pleased by your taking sannyas. I am not so pleased by you even going in samadhi. As I am pleased by that person who listens to his guru and serves and uh, follow, serves according to the instructions of Gurudev. Hmm? So in the commentary of this verse, uh, Sridhar Swami, the original commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam, he said, this, by this verse, see Krishna is saying that Guru Seva is Swatantra Anga of Bhakti. It is independent limb of devotional service. That means it can give all Siddhi, all perfection by itself without the support of any other limb. Hmm? Who will tell these things? Who will speak these things? Hmm? Sila Guru Devas. And one who has the Aprakrita Sraddha, supernatural faith in Guru, then they develop the supernatural realization of all the tattvas. This is the speciality of Guru Dev. If persons listen to his Harikata, they would be in shock. Hmm? His supernatural faith in the Dham. Braja Dham, Navadip Dham, Jagannath Puri Dham. He did Parakrama every year mm. in Navadip and Braj Mandal every year. And not every year, but almost every year in Puri also. But especially Purushottama. Purushottama is coming up this year. Mm. Try to be in Puri. Purushottama. It's only once every two years, eight months, and so many days, and so many minutes and seconds. Mm. It comes. And it's coming. So, 
Srila Gurudev had such uh, sraddha. He used to say that when you're doing parakrama, you should go everywhere with the devotees dancing and singing. Lahod Harinam Sankirtan. And hear Kata from them. Don't worry about uh, other things. Huh? He said, the dham is so powerful, the dust of the dham will speak Harikata to you. He had supernatural faith in Sadhu Sangha. Duruat Bhuta Viryas means Radha Duru is the Panchake. Sopa Mapyasya. Yatta Sopa Pisambandasa Dhyam Baba Janmane. Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has said, Duruat Bhuta Viryas means the power of Sadhu Sangha is Adbhut. Astonishing. It is so powerful. It is so indescribable. It is so inconceivable. Whatever has been glorified about the power of Sadhu Sangha in the scripture, it is even more than that. The scripture even has not described the extent of the power of Sadhu Sangha. Why? Yatta Swapopi Sambandha Sadhyam Baba Janmane. Even a person does not have Shraddha. Shraddha Dura is to Panchakai. A person does not have Shraddha faith even in Krishna. But by a slight contact of a Sadhu, if his heart is simple, he can receive bhav. Sadhyam bhava janmane. If that person is not critical and not hypocritical, he is not critical or envious towards others, then by a moment's association, bhav can appear. We are talking about sadha, sadhu sangha, vajana kriya, anatha, nivristi, nishta, ruchi, asakti, bhav can appear in the heart by the power of the association with a real sadhu. Uh -huh. His Aprakrita Sadha supernatural faith in Harikata. Kvaimastriyava nachiriya vyabhachara dushna Krishna kochaisha paramatma niruddha bhava zanvesh rovnu bhajito vijasopi saksha treyastanoti gadaraji vopayukta He used to say, Udav came to Braja and he looked, saw the love of gopis and with a trembling finger he pointed where are these gopis and where am I? They are on the top of Mount Everest of Prem. And I am at so far at the bottom I cannot even see the extent of their love. Hmm? But Krishna is so merciful to me because he sent me to Vrindavan to have their Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Goy. Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi this actually means uh, Gopi Sangha, Gopi Sangha, Sarva Shastaka. <laughs> Lava Mata, Gopi Sangha, Sarva Siddhi. A sadhu who is that, like that Nikunja, you know, Ratikali Siddhai, one of those gopis. Mm -hmm. Their association is so powerful. Mm -hmm. One's life will be changed forever. So Gurudev would say, that Udav said, I, Krishna is so merciful, he sent me here. And now I have heard the Krishna Kata from the lips of Braja Gopis. Then though I am so fallen, though I am so foolish, though I have never done any service in my life to Krishna. Udav is thinking, I have never done any, even a little service. Nanvesharo nu anu bajuto, not even anu. A tiny bit of service I have not done. So yes, Tanotya Gadaraja Ivo Bayukta. But I have been touched by the Kata from the lips of Braja Gopis. And it is Amrita. Just as a person who by mistake, a person is dying, but by mistake he drinks some nectar, then it will revive him. So in the same way, Srila Gurudev used to say, if you will hear from the lips of a pure devotee, the glories of the gopis of Vrindavan, no, if even the air which touched this katar touches your body, you will attain Krishna Prem very soon, in this life or next life. This was his Aprakrita Sadha, Supernatural faith in Harikata. Huh? He had the supernatural faith in our Guru Parampara. Now some people tell our Guru Parampara they are Sadhana Siddha. <laughs> but Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur himself, he said, one of the specialities of Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur is that by his fair, fervent prayers, he caused the uh, eternal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appear in this world. Hmm? So that means Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Thakur 
Awa Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhakti Danta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Gesha Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj. These persons, they are the Nitya Parikas, eternal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah? It's the opinion of Srila Bhakti Stans for Thakur. So, In the article Bhakti Vinod. Yes, exactly. Thakur Bhakti. Yes, exactly. In the Harmonist yeah. magazine, yes. So, Srila Gurudev had extraordinary sraddha in Saptam Goswami Srila Bhaktinod Thakur mm-hmm. in his vision of the, the future of Krishna consciousness and in the unprecedented nectar of his bhajans that those who will sing the songs of Srila Bhaktinod Thakur and be in his anugatya we are called Vinod Dhara our sp- specific line is Rupanuga, we are Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya and Rupanuga and among that Vinodhara, the current of conception of Srila Bhakti Nol Thakur. Hmm? So he had extraordinary faith in Srila Bhakti Nol Thakur and that time we were in the Philippines in Cebu, that time he was actually transla- he was, uh, translating and writing a first, a new commentary and first commentary ever on Srila Bhakti Nol Thakur's Bhajan Rahasya. Hmm. And at that time, he said to me, as I am writing this commentary, then I am realizing how Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur, in the form of <coughs> Kamala Manjari, is a serving Radha and Krishna, and all the ecstasies of Kamala Manjari are being presented in this Bhajan Rahasya. So, we are touching the subject, how from the young age, when he was serving that boy who was passing away, his supernatural sraddha in Guru Tattva developed. And on the basis of the sraddha in Guru, then the astonishing aprakrita of the worldly faith in all the Chinmay Vastu, transcendental subjects, the holy name, Mahaprasadam, the holy dham, Sadhu Sangha, Harikatha, Bhajans, all of this, that it all expands from that. Without Shraddha in Guru, there is nothing. So Srila Gurudev used to say, Guru Nishta is the backbone of Bhajan, of Bhakti. Just as your spine, if your spine is healthy, you can run and jump. But if there is a slight spinal injury, you are paralyzed and cannot move. So in the same way, if one has some doubt, Sansayatma Vinashati, if there is doubt, one's life is ruined. If there is any doubt in Guru, we cannot progress. And if there's Guru Nishta, then one can gallop in Bhakti. Guru used to say, gallop like a horse, <laughs> like a wild horse, through the stages of Bhakti. Nishta Ruchi Asakti. So, Srila Param Gurudev, he used to travel everywhere giving lectures. And he also used to give presentations with a projector and slides. So in those days, <laughs> the 1930s and 1940s, 50s, in Bengal, a projector was like, you know, a space shuttle or something. <laughs> and so he used to attract many, many people would come to see, to see this. So then one day they were traveling, and then Gurudev realized, oh, I forgot to bring the projector. What will I do? What will I do? So then Srila Trivikram Maharaj, he said, no, you don't worry, don't worry. And then Srila Trivikram Maharaj went to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj and he said, you know, um, I think that it looks like rain this evening. Uh, I, I think that it looks like rain this evening. I don't think we should set up the projector. And then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj said, yes, I think you're right. Yes, well, I'll just give a class this evening without the projector. <laughs> <laughs> and then Srila Trivikramaj came back to Gurudev and told him and then Gurudev. <laughs> so he was, in this way though Srila Trivikramaj was a very strict disciplinarian and he used to argue with Gurudev. We all also, with our own eyes, we've seen them arguing sometimes. <laughs> but Srila Gurudev always saw him as a Shikshi Guru and very loving and his protector also sometimes. So, uh, in the time came when Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshmaraj, he wanted to give sannyas to these three, to Sajjan Sevak, Radhanath Das Adhikari, 
and the gold Orion. So they all said, oh, we, are not, we are not qualified. Mm -hmm. We are not qualified to take sannyas. So then, Sila Vaman Maharaj's uncle, Nashinga Maharaj, came to them and he said, look, you cannot, it's not your business to decide if you're qualified or not qualified. What your Gurudev has told you should just do it. So then he gave sannyas and they became Srila Bhaktivedanta Vaman Maharaj, Srila Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj and Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. The Shringa Maharaj was Saraswati Thakur's? Yes, yes. Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur's disciple, yes. So today is also the um, the appearance day of Srila Bhaktivedanta Vaman Maharaj. So I just want to say something in the interrelationship of our Guru Dev with Srila Vaman Maharaj. So Srila Vaman Maharaj he was also born in 1921 and his mother was a disciple of Bhaktisthan Sur Thakur mm -hmm. and uh, she donated him basically to Srila Bhaktisthan Sur Thakur at the age of nine mm -hmm. and so he, he moved into the Mart and he was going to the school the, the, uh, it was the Bhakti Node Institute he was studying there and he was a very brilliant student, always the top of the class. He had a photographic memory. He was a Shruti Dara. He remembered everything he heard only once, even into his old age. He, he, they considered him the Gaudiya Encyclopedia. And, uh, and s since his childhood, he was under the guidance of Vinod Brahmachari. So he took Harinam from Srila Bhakti Stansu Thakur, but not Diksha. He was young. And then when Srila Bhaktisthan Sutaku left this world, there was some fighting, you know, in the Gaudiya Mat. And, uh, and they were split into different parties. And one party accused Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj, Vinod Brahmacharya at that time, and his associates of a murder. And they were all arrested and put in jail. So when the police came to arrest Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj and s some of his associates, then Sajjan Sevak was there, Srila Vamamaraj, but he was only 15 at that time, so they said, he's a boy, we can't arrest him. And they took the rest and put them in jail. And so now they would not eat the jail food because they're all very strict. So then this young Sajjan Seva Bra Brahmachari, only 15, had to take care of the mat all by himself. He had to uh, beg things, he had to get the boga, he had to do the cooking and bring it to the mat. But he didn't have diksha. And so without diksha, you cannot offer to the deities. So Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj gave him diksha through the bars of the prison so that he could offer the bog to the deities and bring the, the prasadam to the, to the jail every day. And he arranged a lawyer and so on. And then it was, uh, every, when the investigation was made, they were all released because obviously they, had, they were involved in any murder. It was, uh, they were framed. So his diksha from Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj was something quite extraordinary. Uh, so from his childhood, he was always, then in the mat, they, the toilets weren't plumbed in. So the toilet was just a hole with a clay pot. And then, so he used to come uh, every night, and then he used to take out the clay pots with the stool and carry them into the jungle and empty them. Uh, at the time of the, it, when it was time for prasadam, he used to clean the floor, put out all the leaf plates, and put out the salt and some lemon as well to change the prakriti of the rice and dal make it alkaline. And then afterwards he would collect all the plates and clean the floor. So from his childhood he was engaged in so much service. And he was very learned, so Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj engaged him in the um, printing press, operating the printing press in book publication, Granta Seva. So one night he was working the whole night printing and he was tired and a little bit inattentive and he cut off the end of his fingers in the printing press. And so he was in, in extreme pain and uh, Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshe Maharaj came and when he saw this young boy and how he was working and serving so hard and this accident happened, Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshe Maharaj was crying. And he personally took him uh, to Calcutta and his fingers, the parts were all stitched. And after some time everything grew back and as if there was no injury. If you didn't know there was injury, you could not tell. Uh -huh. But it shows the extreme love of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj for Sajjan Sevak Brahmachari. Extreme love. So, 
the three of them were very, very close. Shila Trivikram Maharaj, Shila Vaman Maharaj, and our Gurudev. So very, very close. I remember at the time of Brajamandal Parikrama, in the first day of Kartik, Gurudev would be sitting in all the devotees, in Rup Sanat and Gaudiya Mat, in Seva Kunj. <coughs> and then, oh, having not seen him for since Gorpanim time, whatever, six months or so, then Shila Trivikram Maharaj he arrived from Bengal, walking in with his walking stick. And he would come and then sit on the Vyasasan next to Gurudev. They would give pranam to each other and both would be weeping. Uh, why? Because seeing each other, they were having the sporty in their hearts of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. How they'd served their Gurudev together for the whole life. When Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj left this world, then mm, they had a vote who would be the next Acharya. So instead of, they were not fighting with each other who, to, who could become the next Acharya. They were fighting with each other how to not be the next Acharya. No, you should be the Acharya. No, you should be the Acharya. In the vote, they voted for each other. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, it was decided Srila Vaman Raj was most senior amongst them. So very humbly, he accepted the position of Acharya as service to his Guru and service to his God brothers. So every year at Gorpanim, the Devananda Gaudiya Mat Parakrama, it was the biggest Parakrama that the world had ever seen. You were there. 20,000 people. You cannot see the front of the Parakrama body or the back. It disappears off the horizon in both directions. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, every year, many, many people would come on Gorpanim to take initiation from Srila Bhaktidanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj. So early on that morning, knowing that he would initiate, have to initiate. Srila Vamamaraj used to come to my Gurudev and Srila Trivikram Raj and bow down at their feet and say, please forgive me for this sinful act. Hmm? So he was such an Acharya that though he was so senior, though he was so qualified and so realized, he was begging forgiveness from his junior God brothers, thinking that it was a sinful thing for him to be in the role of Acharya. These uh, Vaishna Vaishnavas and conditioned souls don't think in the same way. Only by associating with the Vaishnavas, then we can understand something. What is a Vaishnava? I remember once mm, I was with Gurudev. It was in Alachua. So I took prasada, and after some, something little was left on the plate, I folded up my plate and I put it in the... In the in the bin of the plates. So then someone came and took it out. Well, I didn't know. Took it out from the bin and opened it up and then was distributing my remnants to devotees. So then someone became upset with this. Oh, Brain Parojan is distributing his remnants. I'm like, I, I didn't know anything. So Gurudev was upset and he called me to his room. Oh, tell Brain Parojan he has to go. So he came in the room and I gave pranams. And uh, I didn't know why he called me. He said, why are you distributing your remnants? I said, what? <laughs> if, any, if anyone has taken, someone must have taken it out from the, where they throw all the plates, because I don't know, this is the first thing I've heard of this. And then Gurudev said, oh, okay, then he became people. <laughs> he became Shanti. <laughs> then he said, he said, you see, he said, an Acharya can, may do it. He said, but I am not an Acharya. My Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragan Kaishimaj, he is Acharya. Srila Bhakti Stanso Thakur, he is Acharya. Srila Bhakti No Thakur, he is Acharya. Hmm? So, I, I am not Acharya. I am not qualified. I never give my remnant to any... I say, good day, I take a remnant every day. <laughs> he said, no, no, I don't give my remnant. That's from the pots. <laughs> from the pots in the kitchen. And so then I was thinking, but I, your drumsticks that you have chewed and spat out, I chew them. But I didn't say <laughs> Because he was convinced that I've his, remnant, his remnants didn't go to anyone. Huh? But anyway... 
Still imagine Both others and you know. others, right? Yes. <laughs> we anyway, by hook or by crook, we used to get... But in his mind, he was saying, uh, I never give my remnant to anyone because I am not an Acharya like uh, my Gurudev and his Gurudev. Then he said, he was quiet for some time, he said, he said but now I am old, so I have to play this role. Uh, this was his mood. Extremely humble. Extremely humble. Uh, once one person, maybe you know him, his, uh, his uh, legal name is a man's bro, and he was uh, doing a PhD at a university in the Scandinavia. So he traveled all over Indi India and he was interviewing different gurus. Um, and then later the book came, it was called As Good As God. And uh, he was interviewing the, not Gaudiya, all types of gurus in all types of sects and, and sampradayas. So he came to Vrindavan, he asked me, can you arrange a meeting with your guru? Because I have some questions. I said, let me look at the questions. I saw the questions, I thought, okay, this will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> because the kind of questions that a disciple would not usually be too nervous or too shy to ask the guru. So then I, I said, yes, of course. So I arranged it. And Gurudev was sitting in Sevakunj by the painting, you know, where in Sevakunj, the original Sevakunj painting. Mm -hmm. And there was a few devotees sitting on one side. So then that student came and he, with his questions he said, so first he said, um, so tell me, how do you know that your guru is bona fide? <coughs> He's asking <coughs> our Gurudev, how does he know that Param Gurudev is bona fide guru? Gurudev said, if you will take your life in your hands and offer it at the feet of your Guru and serve for 50 or 60 years, then you can realize how your Guru is bona fide. <laughs> First you live like me, then you can answer this question. Srila Trivikram Maharaj used to glorify Gurudev. He used to say, of all of us, you are the one you gave your life, took your life in your hands. You are ready to die for your, in the service of your Guru Dev. So then he noted it down. Then he said, so, mm, what made you decide to become a Guru? So then he said, Guru Dev said, I am not a Guru. And I said, but what, these are, who are the, all these disciples here then? Gurudev said, they are not my disciples. They are my friends. And together we are making an atmosphere which is favorable for bhajan. So then he said, so when you go to Goloka Vrindavan, then who will be the next guru after you? So Gurudev heard the first part of the sentence and he was jolted by that. He didn't, it seems as if he didn't hear the second part of the sentence. He said, I will not go to Goloka Vrindavan. He said, but if in my next life I can become a blade of grass on the bank of Jamuna, so when the Vaishnavas are doing Parikrama, I can get their foot dust, then it will be great success for me. Srila Gurudev had traveled all over the world and his preaching was so very successful everywhere. Mm. So charming. He was so brilliant. Mm. I remember once some persons, they were doing some impersonal meditation and they, and they came to, they asked, uh, they said, uh, can you tell us what you think of TM? He just said, TM, empty. <laughs> 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 like this, it was speaking always in a miraculous and beautiful way. <laughs> uh, and then when he became mm, older, then he had these pastimes of illness. 
several episodes were there. We thought he may leave or he may stay or he may leave again. In this way, he was increasing the attachment of all the disciples. So, one time, one sannyasi came to him. I'm not going to say who it was. And he said, mm. when, you, when you leave, who will be the next Acharya? Good day smiled, he said, you. <laughs> <laughs> and this person, it was very unlikely. So then that person said, uh, can I have that in writing? <laughs> <laughs> so then Gurudev, his response was very beautiful. He said, I appear to be the, an Acharya or the head of an institution, like whatever, Gaudi Vedanta Samhita or International Pure Bhakti Yoga Society. But that is your vision not my vision. Hmm? He said, I am like Shukadev Goswami. When Prakshit Maharaj was about to leave this world, he had seven days left to live. Miraculously, out of nowhere, no one knows where he came from, Shukadev Goswami appeared there, naked. And he sat down and he spoke the guitar to the right person at the right time when it was needed. And when he finished speaking, he got up and he walked away and no one knows where he went. He said, so I am like Shukadev Goswami. I have come here, I am speaking guitar and I am leaving. He said, do you think Shukadev Goswami was thinking, who will be the next Acharya after me? No, it did not come in his mind at all. I am like that. So, Then, the last time, when it came towards the final pastimes of Srila Gurudev, mm -hmm. actually a few years before, he was in Puri at the birthplace of Bhakti Sansu Thakur. He was sitting down, I was at his feet with a few other devotees. He said, for 50 years, I have preached the glories of Prahlad Maharaj, the glories of Dhruva Maharaj, the glories of Ambarish Maharaj, hmm? the glories of Chitraketu Maharaj. He said, but now I am speaking why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world. What it is, his his Manobishta, Sri Chaitanya Manobishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadam Hayam, Tadati Swapadantikam. Hmm? That was manifested by Srila Rupa Goswami. Uh, Radha Dasyam, the glories of Radhika and her eternal service in the Nikunjas of Vrindavan and those who will be with me in my final days, they will attain it. So Srila Gurudev spoke these things hmm? that Srila Bhaktisthan Sotako in his final days, he was saying, I wanted to tell all of this but I spent so much time cutting jungles but you should dedicate your life to this. So our Srila Gurudev, he was fulfilling the desire of Srila Bhaktisthan Thakur and it's very gambir, profound, shocking. Many people could not understand it. For example, once at the disappearance festival of Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan, in Krishna Balaram Mandir, Gurudev was giving a lecture there and he said, what is the glory of Srila, your Srila Prabhupada? Hmm? The glory is not that he has spread Sankirtan everywhere and distributed so many books and made so many temples and <coughs> so many disciples. Hmm? Srila Prabhupada himself he used to say hmm, that the, I want only one moon. What is the use of many stars? Ekas hmm? Chandras Tamohanti. Na Tara Sahasra Saha. One moon can il il illuminate the sky and dispel the darkness, but thousands of stars are unable to do it. So he used to say, I won. So, what is the, the glory of Srila Prabhupada? What is the glory of the great Acharyas in our line? Their glory is that they are the servants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world and he has the external cause of his appearance and internal cause of his appearance. So the external cause of his appearance is the Yuga Dharma, spreading the Harinam Sankirtan and preaching e everywhere. And the internal cause, oh, we were discussing yesterday, the identity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the necessity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to complete the Prem Leela of Radha and Krishna. Hmm? So, Gurudev said that just when, just as when Krishna comes into this world, it looks like he's killing demons. But it's Maha Vishnu in Krishna who is killing the demons. Why does Krishna come? Prema Rasa Nirjas Karite Ashwadhan Raga Marga Bhakti Loke Karite Pracharam To relish Prema Rasa. And incidentally also uh, opens the path of Raga Marg. So, in the same way, Gurudev said that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela is like this. Who is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Hmm? Gurudev said, we know that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did so many pastimes. But many of these pastimes, it is Mahavishnu in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is doing this. Just like Krishna killing the demons. And he gave examples. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has delivered Prakashananda Saraswati and his 60,000 sannyas disciples. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has the, mm, defeated Keshav Gashmiri in the debate. He has delivered Jaga and Madai. Hmm? He has the, mm, converted the Chan Kazi. Hmm? All of these are, this is the Mahavishnu within Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What we told yesterday is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who next to Krishna Radha Krishna is like this. He can be there with them. Mm -hmm. So that is Rasaraj Mahabhav. See Krishna. So there are many persons. They are worshipping Mahaprabhu. But they are worshipping Mahavishnu. And in the same way, he said, if you are worshipping Srila Prabhupada, telling he is great because, only because he has distributed books and made so many disciples and opened so many temples, without going into the Sri Chaitanya Manobhishta, the Manobhishta, savor of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you are not really worshipping Prabhupada, the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but you are worshipping as a servant of Mahavishnu, so it is di actually diminishing his glory. Hmm? So many persons who could not digest, they became up in arms. Hmm? And some persons willfully uh, misunderstood as well. But how merciful he was to open the door to the ocean of Bhakti Rasa. So when Srila Gurudev, this last time he was in Baja, in Baja festival in California, he, he said, this is the last time I will mm. come here. Because he knew what he was coming. And he went back to India, and then from India, uh, then the last place he went outside of India, was mm, he, he stopped in Dubai you know I'm going to Dubai twice two three times every year mm -hmm. that house that house it was the last place he stayed outside of India and that was on his way to Moscow he did Moscow festival then he came back to that house in Dubai mm -hmm. uh, where I'm going all, all the time I'm going there in, <coughs> on my way in and out of India it was his last place and then he came back to India and when he was in India, he went to Nepal, mm. preaching in Nepal, and there is a Janakpuri. Mm. So it's most sweet that from his childhood, he had such love for Sita Ram, but he'd never been to Janakpuri, which is the Sita's place, her father's kingdom. And so when he was in his very old, in his very last pastimes, he went there to Janakpuri and when he was giving a speech there, he said that, Now I have finally come to this place. My whole life I wanted to have darshan of this place. Gurudev used to say, Keshavadrita Ragupati Rupa Jaye Jagadisha His love is for Radha Krishna, but Radha Krishna there, Janaka Sutta Krita Bhushana Jita Dushana He 
Shamara Shamit Dasha Kanta Jai Jai Dev Hari Radhe Krishna Govinda Gopala Dhanda Dhulala Yashoda Dhulala Jai Jai Dev Hari Sita Ram Dayada Vilas Vigrav Radha Krishna So he said, now after my whole life I finally had the darshan of this place and now I have completed my Tirtha Yatra. All the holy places in India I have been. So my, yat, my Tirtha Yatra is complete. And what I came to this world to preach, it has been preached. Hmm? I have done it. So now my mission is completed. So he was giving a hint that soon he would leave. So then he came to Braja and he was at Govardhan. And it was Kartik time. Perhaps many of you were there. And during Kartik is the disappearance day of Srila Vaman Goswami Maharaj. So Gurudev had said, I will disappear on Srila Vaman Maharaj's day. So when the disappearance day in Kartik came, and he was very, very manifesting the Leela of being very ill. He was not moving, he was not eating. It was an old devotee doing kirtan all day and night. <coughs> and... Please praying, don't go, please, don't go. please stay with us. And now the time came, this is the day he said he would leave, and that day passed and he hadn't left. And afterwards he actually got up, opened his eyes, and again he was talking. What is this? It's a great miracle. Hmm? And his health became somewhat better, and then he went to Jagannath Puri. And then... He said, I will leave on Srila Vamaraj's day, but he didn't tell us which day. We thought the disappearance day. Mm. And then this day came, the appearance day of Srila Vamaraj Maharaj. And there, at the Chakra Tirtha, in the very place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Jagannath Dev appeared from the ocean. Mm. Uh, on this day, Srila Gurudev, in the form of Raman Manjari, entered into the Nityalila of Sisi Radha So Srila Gurudev used to say that the disciple who has served his Guru in his life, he will, to the degree to which he has served Gurudev, to that degree he will feel separation. Afterwards. Like Raghunath Swami. Sunyayate maha gostam gerindro jagarayate vyagara tundayate kundam jivatu rahitasame. Because Raghunath Goswami served so much Rupa Goswami, after he disappeared, then he used to weep. Oh, this Braja Mandal, I have written Brajavila stuff. So many verses glorifying all the places in Braj. But now without Rupa Goswami, the whole of Braj Mandal is Shunya like an empty, desolate wasteland. Garindro mm. Jagarayate I have prayed to Giraj Govardhan, Nijanikatani Basam Dehi Govardhanatam. Nijapati Buja Danda Chattva Bhavam Prapadya Pratihatamata Rista Danda Devanda Gava Achula Pratula Shaila Shaini Bhupa Priyamme Nijanikatani Basam Dehi Govardhan But now I cannot bear to even look at Govardhan. Grindro Jagarayate, when I see Govardhan, it seems to be like the mouth of a python about to devour me. So painful. And I have prayed to Radhakund, glorifying Radhakund. Tadati Surabi Radhakunda Me Vastrayome. But now I cannot bear to look at Radhakund. It seems to be like the gaping mouth of a tiger eating me alive. Why? Because of separation. Oh, Rupa Goswami, I cannot live without you. So this day is the Biraha Mahotsav, day of separation. Hmm? And those who have served their Gurudev, the degree to which they have served, they can experience that supernatural, <coughs> transcendental separation on this day. So Biraha means separation, but V means Vishesh, intense. And Raha means confidential meeting. So separation is not to be separated. Yeah. It is apparent, physical separation. But Viraha Mahotsav means the great enthusiasm which arises in our bhajan 
by a very confidential and secret loving meeting with Gurudev in the heart. That is the true celebration of Viraha Mahotsav. Niti Lila Purvistong Vishnu Parash Todara Sada Sissima Drupa Nuga Chari Varish Le Bhakti Danta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Niti Lila Purvistong Vishnu Parash Todara Sada Sissima Bhakti Danta Vaman Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Gaur Premanande Jai Gaur Premanande